Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing the series where I introduce you to my pets. So I have a meet all my leopard geckos, a meet all my crested geckos, and a meet my bearded dragons, and also a meet my African fat tail geckos that I actually haven't posted yet, but it's coming soon and probably by the time you see this, it'll already be up. But this one is meet all of my skinks. Now I have a few skinks, a variety of species, and I was like, a good way to introduce them would be to put them all in one video instead of having one short video about each one. So I hope that's cool with you. Let's go ahead and get started. But first, as usual, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, please consider supporting us over on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. And with all that said, let's go ahead and meet my skinks. Haku is a northern blue tongue skink that my ex-fiance purchased at NARBC Tinley Park in 2017. Haku is a fen orange, fen white cross, though I'm not familiar with blue tongue skink morphs, so I can't say much about that. Though both my ex and I cared for Haku over the years, we split in 2021 and he left Haku with me. Haku was named after the character Haku from Spirited Away, but also the character Haku from Naruto. Although I think I preferred the character from Spirited Away and my ex preferred the character from Naruto. My ex believed Haku to be a female due to the fact that he never saw hemipenes when Haku used the bathroom and never saw seminal plugs. As I don't have another blue tongue skink to compare to or expose Haku to to see the behavioral changes that might indicate whether Haku was male or female, I really can't say for sure whether that she's male or female, but because of those things, I refer to her as female and it doesn't matter to me either way. Haku is a good eater, except when it comes to live insects, which she can be pretty picky about. She prefers earthworms, hornworms, and black soldier fly larvae, and does not prefer superworms, dubia roaches, and the more commonly fed insects. I think the reason that she's such a big fan of hornworms and earthworms is because they're so big and the movement isn't like crawly, it's wriggly, but that's just, you know, what I think. I don't know for sure what's going on in her little skink head. Haku, like most blue tongue skinks, burrows and spends most of her time under the ground. She does bask and climb as well, which you'll see clips of her doing here. And she really does like to come out in the like middle of the afternoon. And that's when she does her poops. She just like walks around the enclosure, finds the little back corner, and that's where she does her poops. And then she comes around and she waits at the front, like pretty much expecting food to be delivered. She eats around once a week. It just depends when she likes to come out and show herself. And when she does, then I know that she's hungry and I feed her. Haku, like most blue tongue skinks, eats all kinds of things. I mean, not just live insects. She'll eat vegetables. She'll eat fruits on very rare occasions. She eats pre-made diets. She eats eggs. She'll eat a lot of things, especially if they're gross. Like, she loves things that smell super strong, which, you know, I imagine is probably just because in the wild they're omnivorous and sometimes they'll eat things that just are quite nasty. So, well, nasty to us, but delicious to them. But I will include a video up here on the screen and in the description down below of a, a video of her eating all different kinds of foods because when she officially became my skink, I wanted to try and experiment with some different things. And so I gave her earthworms for the first time. I gave her black soldier larvae for the first time. And so, yeah, I have a video all about the different types of things that she eats. It is not like a complete care guide or anything, but I will include that for you. Haku turns six years old this year and people have been asking me to make blue tongue skink content. And now that she is completely my responsibility, I want to be able to put that type of content out for you. I just don't really know what to post. And I really would love to have more and more experience with her before I post like a long care guide. Even though I've been partially taking care of her for years, she's never been fully my responsibility until about the last five or six months now. So I would really prefer to wait before putting out any sort of like long form care content. But if you have any type of videos you'd like to see me make about her, let me know and I can see what I can do. This is Haku's enclosure. It is a 4x2x2 by two by two Zen Habitats enclosure. I have an affiliate link with Zen Habitats I will leave down below. It's a great way to help me out if you're interested, but if you're not, that's okay too. I do have a video about her husbandry in terms of her enclosure, like how I set it up, what things that I use on this channel. I will leave a link for that on the screen here and I will leave a link for that down below. But she does really well in this enclosure. I would love to upgrade her to a 6x2x2. By two by two. And hopefully in the future when I'm finally able to achieve all of my enclosure plans, because you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm always having more plans, but my plan for her would be a, an enclosure that has more floor space. So that's in the future though. 
Roku is a fire skink that I found on Craigslist and brought home in March of 2018 when I met up with the person who had posted the Craigslist posting at NARBC Tinley Park. Their fire skinks had babies and they were selling them through Craigslist and the individual held onto one for me until we could meet at Tinley since Chicago was nearly two hours away. So it was really nice of them. They held on for Roku for like a month and a half before I could come to Tinley. I brought home little baby Roku and the rest is history. Roku is four years old, going on five later this year. Like most fire skinks, Roku is not fond of being handled or really being interacted with in any way that is outside of please feed me and prefers to burrow or hide in cork grounds. It took Roku a solid year and a half to stop hiding when I entered the room, and eventually I even got to tongue feed Roku. So one of my favorite things to do with Roku is to open the enclosure, and usually Roku will come out from the substrate or out of a hide, and then I get to tongue feed them. It's just an absolute blast. I actually moved Roku into my bedroom from the pet room and since then we've had to start this process all over so right now Roku is back to bowl feeding but I imagine that once you know Roku feels like they can properly settle in they'll start letting me tongue feed them again but I do miss tongue feeding them because it's so much fun. Roku is a fantastic, speedy climber and utilizes every square inch of the enclosure. I do not know if Roku is a male or a female as I have no other fire skink to compare to and sexing them is challenging to begin with, but much like Haku, it doesn't matter to me if Roku is male or female as I'm not like a breeder, so it's really no significance to me. Roku was named after Avatar Roku from Avatar The Last Airbender and is one of the most beautiful animals I have in the family, but also one of the most reclusive, like the skink you'll get to meet next. I actually want to tell a story about Roku really quick before we show Roku's enclosure, and that is that when Roku was just a wee baby, a little tiny skink, I actually like opened the Exoterra enclosure and Roku really speedily scampered up my arm and went underneath the sleeve of my hoodie and literally climbed all the way up my arm and onto my chest and this happened in a matter of like three seconds it happened so unbelievably fast and I had to very gently undress myself in the pet room like right in front of the window which faces the street because I didn't want to move too much I was afraid Roku might like fall down my hoodie onto the ground or something so I had to like get undressed with the window basically open try to get this tiny skink out of my shirt without you know damaging Roku in any way because there was super little and I was like could barely feel them on my skin and I was like oh my god this is ridiculous fortunately that never happened again and I have learned my lesson that fire skinks are very fast, very smart, little mischievous creatures. But this is Roku's enclosure. Roku lives in a 36 by 18 by 18 exoterra that has a DIY background. I have multiple videos on this enclosure and I will include one on the screen here and others down below. This enclosure used to have live plants, but... Um, I'm not really great with live plants. I've just pretty much given up at this point because, you know, in order to get the proper coverage from live plants, you need to really be able to keep them alive <laughs> and you make sure you have a lot of them. And it's just, it's too much. So I chose fake plants. I went back to them. Roku doesn't seem to care. So it's fine by me. And now on to the next skink. My red-eyed crocodile skink is named Fugaku. She is named after a character from Naruto because I really wanted to name her after an Uchiha due to the color around her eyes. But I also like all of my skinks to have names that end in Ku. So there's Haku, Roku, Fugaku, and the next one you meet is Shukaku. I know it's weird, but like once it's set in stone, I have to have it that way. So fortunately, I was able to find Fugaku, who is an Uchiha, uh, even though that is a male character and my skink is a female. But she's a lady skink. I found her for rehoming on Facebook in Chicago and picked her up in December of 2018. She actually came with her previous enclosure and it was actually a pretty decent husbandry. So I felt really great about that. She is much like other red-eyed crocodile skinks in the way that she doesn't come out if I'm around and she's super skittish. When I'm not around, she loves to climb her background and sit under her little waterfall and soak in her stream area. She's super smart and knows when I open and close her lid that I have delivered food and she waits till I leave the room or if I'm lucky and I sit super still, she'll come out and run all the way across her enclosure to the bowl and start eating, which is really fun to watch because I don't really get to see her eat that often. If I ever do feed her off of tongs, it's like with her face barely poking out of a hide. So you don't really get to interact that much 
much with them, but that's okay because she's beautiful and I just love having her. Fu is super fast, and though I don't get to see her incredibly often, I adore her. She was actually a dream pet of mine, and so it's a joy to have her. Like, I waited so long to find a red eye crocodile skink from a situation of rehoming because they are often wild caught, and not so much nowadays. Like, there's more and more ones being captive bred, but unfortunately, there were and still are wild caught ones out there. And because I didn't want to support like the importation of wild caught reptiles, I just waited years to find her for a situation of rehoming. And I'm so happy I did because she's really incredible. And, you know, even though red eye crocodile skinks are reclusive and you don't really get to see them that often, she's literally like she was one of my dream pets. So I'm so happy to have her. And I do not care whatsoever that I get to see her like pretty rarely, you know, it doesn't matter to me at all. Fu's former owner actually was rehoming her because they didn't get to see her that often. She was purchased at a pet store and therefore I don't know if she's wild caught or not, although it's likely that she is because she was purchased from a pet store and not a breeder. I also don't know her age because of that, so I don't really know too much about her, her background, but I love her to bits. But this is her enclosure, so she has a stream area, there is a filter, and the filter has like a pump that goes up through the background, and the tube then pours water out from the background and back into the water section. This makes it so that like the ledge over here has like a little bit of water on it, and she loves hanging out there. So when she doesn't want to sit submerged in water, she will just sit on the ledges and then let the water like hit her or just like kind of soak on the wetness of the ledge and she also loves to climb the other side of her background like she really gets around this enclosure it's a 20 gallon long it's bioactive substrate with a built-in stream area universal rocks background it's one of my favorite enclosures i love enclosures that have water features they are a lot of work but they are so pretty and so enriching for the reptiles I have a few videos out on enclosure builds that I've had for Fugaku that have worked. I will leave them on screen and down below. Now we are on to Shukaku, who is my last skink and also is a Peter's Banded skink. Shukaku was rehomed to me by someone who had taken them in as a rescue from someone who had purchased them at a pet store. I brought Shu home in April of 2021, so it has been nearly a year now and it's been a delightful year. Shu, like the vast majority of Peter's Bandit Skinks in captivity, is wild caught, so I do not know their age. I also don't know whether Shukaku is male or female, as it is really hard to tell the difference between males and females, especially since they haven't been bred really well in captivity, and so we don't really have a lot to compare to. And also, I only have one Peter's Bandit Skink, so I can't compare Shukaku to another skink. And so I don't know for certain whether Shukaku is male or female and don't really have an inclination either way. Shukaku is actually not as shy as I was expecting them to be, especially for Peter's Bandit Skinks, which I've heard are like, you know, just wanted to chill out in the sand, want to be left alone. And because they come out at night, a lot of people don't see them. But I see Shukaku almost every single day. Whenever it's nighttime, Shukaku immediately comes out. They're exploring their enclosure. They're digging. I can hear Shukaku scratching all night long. It is so cute. I can just hear little like pitter patters of sand flicks against the enclosure. I can hear when Shukaku has reached the ground. And then, you know, every single day I take the sand and I redistribute it so that you know shukaku can dig again but also shukaku creates really lovely burrows under the sand as well like especially underneath the water dish where i have a lot of like moisture retention and i pour extra water into the water dish like every few days so that there's more moisture in the sand there because shukaku will create really cool burrows underneath the sand there it's just really neat to see they also readily took food from tongs and are out exploring every single night, whether I'm like close to the enclosure or far away from the enclosure. It's been like that from pretty much day one. Like the moment I brought Shu home, it took maybe a week for me to see Shukaku around at night, like exploring the enclosure. And when I offered food from tongs or just like dropped the food off the tongs in front of them, they ate straight away. So I feel like I've been incredibly fortunate to not have any sort of shyness or difficulty from Shukaku. I know a lot of people have been asking for care information about this species, especially because there's not as much out there about Peter's Banded Skinks as there is for a number of other skink species. I will put care information out, but as a rule, I do not put care information out on species I haven't kept for less than a year. And even after I've kept them for a year, I like to give it a little bit after that as well before I start posting care content, just because it feels like 
it feels too soon or too early or too inexperienced to be posting care content about a species I haven't had that long. So I will post probably towards the latter portion of this year, probably like a long form care guide, or I'll start to be posting care content about Shikaku. But yeah, until then, you're just going to have to be patient. I apologize. Oh, and one last thing for anyone wondering, Shikaku is named after the one-tailed beast from Naruto. One last thing that I want to say about Shikaku is that if you see my Peter Spade and Skink or someone else's and you feel inclined to keep Peter Spade and Skinks as a pet, please keep in mind that the vast majority, I'm talking like 90% or more of them, are wild caught. That is the case for Shukaku and many of the others that you see. I think there's only been just a couple cases of successful captive breeding of this species. So I really want you to know, please make an informed, educated choice if you're going to be out there purchasing the skinks that you see in this video, especially a Peter's Banded skink, because there are not that many captive bred ones. And, you know, for me personally, I think it's an unethical choice to buy wild caught reptiles. And so, you know, I just want to be as responsible as possible when I show my Peter's Banded skink and also my red-eyed crocodile skink, any type of skink that might perhaps be wild caught. So please just be an educated consumer, an educated purchaser of reptiles. And, you know, you're, we are allowed to have a difference of opinion about whether it's ethical to keep wild caught animals or not, but that's just where I sit and to be as responsible as possible, I wanted to put that message in here. Shikaku's enclosure is a 36 by 18 by 18 exoterra. The side pieces of this enclosure, as well as the hide, come from custom reptile habitats, and the background comes from Universal Rock Backgrounds. I will leave a link, affiliate link, for custom reptile habitats down below, so please check it out. I will also leave a link for a full tour of this enclosure on screen and down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed meeting my skinks. Let me know how many skinks do you have? What's your favorite species? How do you keep your skinks? What kind of skink do you want next? Let me know all that down below in the comments. Also, please consider leaving a like or consider commenting, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, all that good stuff. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!